Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. By 2025, Uber wants all of its approximately 45,000 drivers in London to switch to electric vehicles. That's an ambitious goal, particularly considering its goal for electrification globally isn't until 2040. But it's fallen behind in its London efforts, partly due to some surprising obstacles. Our tech reporter Sam Schechner is with us to talk through what's happened. So, Sam, you've been scratching the surface of Uber's EV goals. What have you found? Well, I found that they were frequently missing the interim targets that they'd set along the way, and that every time they set a target, it would be a little bit behind. They're at 19% electric miles now, some more than four years into the goal. And, you know, with about two years left, they have a long way to go. All right. So let's talk about some of the reasons they're falling behind. To begin with, what's it been like to get drivers to start using EVs? Because Uber doesn't supply the cars for its drivers. Yeah, and that's exactly why it's a sort of interesting example, because London is a city where the rules around emissions have gotten tighter and tighter to drive an internal combustion engine vehicle in central London. You have to pay fees now. The city is cracking the whip and Uber started giving incentives to drivers. We'll take a smaller commission if you drive an electric vehicle. We'll strike deals with car companies to get better prices in the hope of accelerating that transition. And it's almost like a microcosm of the problems that you see with EV transitions more broadly. People are really concerned about finding charging for their vehicles. And the upfront cost for an EV remains high because there's not really a big secondary market for them yet. And if your job is driving your car all day, having to take a break out to charge in the middle of the day is a huge problem. It could cut a fifth of your earnings. That's been the major obstacle for Uber to get to this goal. So if charging is such a key issue for Uber, how is it dealing with that? How is it trying to help drivers find better charging options? Well, they're a tech company, so they came at it with data. They looked around London and they saw that most of their drivers live in, say, lower income areas where there weren't a lot of on-street charging options. Most of their drivers don't have their own driveways where they can charge their cars at night. So they set about trying to get more on-street charging in those areas. They've set aside five million pounds to try to finance some of these new chargers. But that process has been very slow. I I walked around London last month and I saw the first two chargers that went into the ground three years after they first made the promise. And months after the time that they'd said they'd have hundreds already in the ground. It's just been very slow going. Some of the local officials said, no, we have better deals, or no, Uber wants too much control. Other boroughs of London, simply the planning and tender offer process took much longer than Uber expected. So what is Uber saying it's going to do to address this, to potentially meet this upcoming goal it has? Well, they say that they're switching their strategy a little bit to rely more on rapid charging hubs, even if that does mean taking an hour out of the day. If they can get to somewhat lower prices for drivers, maybe make that half an hour, that would help. And they're also hoping that tightening rules will give them a a little boost as well to license a new private hire vehicle in London that is, you know, a car service car of the type they'd use on Uber. It now needs to be a battery electric vehicle since January, but existing vehicles on the road can be grandfathered in as long as they're less than 10 years old. So Uber's going to need to do more than that to convince all of the drivers to switch over. Sam, how do Uber's London plans compare with the electrification goals that it's set in other cities? Well, Uber is promising to be all electric in major cities in the U.S., Europe, and Canada by 2030. So they have a little bit more time, but there are local rules that will push them to do it faster. For instance, in California, they'll have to be 90% EV across the state by 2030. And actually in Europe, they are hoping to get to 50% electric vehicle miles in a group of seven cities in aggregate by 2025 as well. There's some cities like Lisbon, which are actually ahead of their plans. And so they think that that will allow them to meet that goal. So it's not all bad news for Uber's EV goals. 
I wonder, are there lessons that other companies might take away from Uber's experience in trying to push for electrification? This is something of a cautionary tale for companies that have these very ambitious goals. It's great to be ambitious. Uber says that it helps juice the market and it sets an example for other companies. But if you fall short, you're likely to get dinged for it. And there is a lesson for officials and public policymakers who are hoping that all these corporate goals are going to help them meet their overall climate targets. It's worth digging in a little bit more deeply into how attainable some of the goals are. All right, that was our European tech reporter, Sam Schechner. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.